no new you. <clears throat> Pardon me. No new you. No new church. No new nation. No new year. Part six. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, always remember it is all about Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's pretty much all we're going to deal with tonight. We will come back to Second Chronicles 7.14. For in the title of this message, No New You. That's where it begins. No new church. And I might add another point. No new you. No new family. No new church. No new nation. Dealing with all of the institutions that God has created for our good. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, Lord, I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all of the millions and manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Lord, you have been very good to you. Our problem is we have not been you have been very good to us, rather. Our problem is we have not been good to you. And uh, so I say, Hollywood, be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And uh, Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. I praise you and I thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, uh, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose on the third day by your power. The Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. If we would only believe in him and trust in him, for all men do not have faith. All men are not saved. All men are not born again. And so that's why we continue to suffer in this sin-cursed world. All men have not chosen to be made new by you. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all of the salvation and spiritual, family and life, financial and material, protection and provision, mental and physical blessings as well, that you bestowed upon us. And Holy Father God, uh, we're not perfect people, but I praise you and I thank you that some of us have been made new, new creatures in Christ. Lord, uh, we would not be here tonight if somebody was not made new. For Lord, if we were the same old person before we met you, we would be doing a thousand other things tonight with no thought of you at all. For that, that is how it was before you came into our lives. 
So, Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your real saints. I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for those who are truly born again. I praise you, Lord, and I thank you for those who are truly saved and who by choice uh, join us, not because they have to, and not because they need to go to another service, but because they love you and they love your word. And they would rather be here, Lord, than someplace else. And so, Holy Father God, we individually and collectively confess our sins as true believers, those of us who are saved. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our many sins as we from our hearts. By your grace, forgive those who have sinned against us. And Holy Father God, I pray that you would crush and crucify, Lord, our wicked, evil, and ungodly flesh within us all, and the old man within us afresh and anew tonight. Fill us with the fullness, the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And Holy Father God, I pray that you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell and the satanic demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, sabotage, and foolishness. Lord, cast out the demon spirits of pride, stubbornness, and sins, of pride, stubbornness, and rebelliousness, and the spirit of Jezebel, Sanballat, and Tobias always trying to hinder, always trying to distract and cause us problems. And Holy Father God, even on a placid and peaceful light, a night like tonight, as it seems right now, Lord, do we have learned, because we're not ignorant of the devil's devices, to always be on guard. And Lord, I know people don't like to hear that. I know people want to relax all of the time, especially we Americans. But we're in spiritual warfare if we're not in any other kind of warfare with a sinister, wicked, evil devil who does not play fair. And he will take a shot at us at any time. Uh, oftentimes is on the weekend oftentimes is on prayer meeting day, uh, but he will take a pot shot any time he can get one in, and he always goes for the weakest link. And so, Lord, I pray that you will help everybody to get prayed up now for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when we take our biggest hit. And, uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you'll help us to endure hardness as good soldiers. I commended some people for doing that today. And not to whine, not to complain, uh, Lord, but to endure hardness because I know that you are the God who can, in a zip, bam, boom way, change our lives in a moment of time. I've seen you do it. You've done it for me. You did it for Joseph, as, who, uh, as we read about him this morning. And uh, you've done it for millions of others. You've caused us to, you've blessed us with favor. That even may, well, the kind of favor that makes our enemies uh, at peace with us. And, and not only at peace with us, but our enemies will help us do your work. And that's what happened to Joseph. It happened to me. It has, it has happened to, I believe, thousands of others who endured hardness as a good soldier, endured until the end, kept on going, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for our labor is not in vain in the work of the Lord. Help us to be steadfast, help us to be unmovable. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts, not only right now in this service, for hopefully most of us are on God for that, but after the service, in the afterglow, help us to be sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. Lord, bless and protect our families, our ministries, our 
churches uh, that we are involved in from ourselves, from our flesh and from the devil, and from the demons of hell, and from evil people in the family, evil people in the church, evil people in the world. Lord, I know it's shocking that I'm praying, shocking to some people, not to you, that I pray that way, but it's, that's just the way it is now. We have to pray like that. And Lord, you lead me to pray that way. And Lord God in heaven, uh, I do pray that if we do right by you, if each and every one of us uh, tell the truth and shame the devil, be transparent and shame the devil, humble ourselves and pray and seek your face, and turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to you, our first love, and get back to our first works. Lord God in heaven, you have the power, and only you have the power to revive us again. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be on an individual basis. For it begins with the you thing, each and every one of us one by one. We can't have great families unless we begin with ourselves, with one. We can't have great churches until we become new ourselves. We can't have a great nation until we deal with our evil selves. And so, Holy Father God, we pray that you'll help us to begin where the rubber meets the road. And, uh, Holy Father God, help us to understand the times. Things are happening that you have told me were going to happen for 10 to 12, 13, 14 years now. I can't remember how long, but I, it's all recorded. It's recorded in audio, it's recorded in video, it's recorded uh, on paper. As you have led me for some reason, and I was laughed to scorn, by some, even my own family, that uh, these days would come to America. And you led me to preach your holy gospel and your holy word for over five years, nearly every day, warning people that this day would come. And here we have a situation a plague that is marching across this nation every day, killing thousands every day, and nobody can stop it. And worse things are forming. Then we have a situation where we saw for the first time, I believe in history, the storming of the capital of the United States of America, the seat of democracy. And tomorrow, for the first time in the history of this country, Congress will impeach a president for the second time in a one-term, four-year term situation, which is going to, of course, uh, throw more gas on the smoldering flames and uh, in multiple ways on multiple fronts you will continue to destroy uh, this country that you blessed so much to be a city on a hill to be a light to the world uh, and the problem is we didn't bless you We've turned our backs on you. It was sealed when the Supreme Court and the President of the United States, President Obama and President Trump, who carried it on, sanctioned and caused the government of these United States that has as his motto, in God we trust, they chose to sanction. Not they, not just them. Many in the church. Because without the church, the presidents would have never done this. 
Without the pastors, the president, President Obama, President Trump would have never done this. They sanctioned the abomination of homosexuality, enshrined it in law. And not only that, homosexual marriage, which didn't even enter the mind of Lot. And so you have put in my heart that we, if we did not repent, we face the abyss. And, and we're there. So, Lord, let your will be done. And uh, be thorough with us. Break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. Lord, save as many souls as you can as I preach your gospel and, uh, and as others preach your gospel on the way out. And Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, continue to preserve and bless and protect your 7,000 and your remnant. Receive all glory, praise, and honor to your name. Thank you so much for being so good to us, this young country. No country has been more blessed outside of the great country of Israel. In fact, without your great country of Israel, Lord, America would have never been what uh, she became. In Jesus Christ's name, we thank you. And we praise you for what you have done. And we thank you for your love. And I know it breaks your heart to see people suffer. Uh, but we must suffer because we have done so wicked in your sight. So help us, Lord, to understand that and accept that. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Where's the other one? No new you, no new family, no new church, no new nation. No new year. I read in your hearing a very interesting passage of scripture which we've already dealt with as far as understanding it. But it is very important. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature it does not say uh, he might be a new creature he is a new creature it doesn't say that uh, he's becoming a new creature no he is a new creature he may be uh, becoming a better Christian but because there is a growth process, but he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, so dear friend, if you are in Christ, you ought to be a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things. Notice the wording here. All things are become new. So why do you claim to be a Christian and uh, you know that you're not a new creature? And the old things are still with you and not passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, I'm trying. No, no. It's all about, therefore, if any man be in Christ. See, and see, this is what I've been saying for a while. 
we have a whole lot of folk who are in the church. But they're lost. They have never been born again. I would venture to say we have more tares in the church than wheat now. You know how I know that? Because there's nothing new about them. They are still walking in their old ways. And so, ladies and gentlemen, every time a new year rolls around, folks begin to think about things they can change in their lives. Some people say that they are going to lose weight and start eating healthy. Some people who drink wine and beer, they go on a, what they call a dry month or a dry period for health purposes. Others say that they are going to go back to college and get a degree that they always wanted to get. Some say they're going to fight to get out of debt. Some say that they are going to write a book or start their own business. And others commit to getting organized or spending more time with family and friends. People get excited about, well, some people get excited about a new year. And one of the things that triggered me uh, to preach this series and to preach this message is because particularly coming out of 2020, a year that everybody thought was going to be the greatest year ever, 2020. Wow, we made it to 2020. <clears throat> But I started hearing in December and, and in November of 2020, people cursing 2020, giving 2020 the finger, saying bye-bye 2020, singing songs like na-na-na-na-na, hey-hey-hey, goodbye. Hating 2020. No good words about 2020. Talking about I can't wait to get out of 2020. I welcome and look forward to getting into 2021. Somehow thinking that the year is going to be better when the number changes over. And I'm saying to you that if there's no new you, there's no new year. Some of you are church members, but you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You, you have never been born again. You're religious, but you're, you're lost. I have family members that way. You do too. They go faithfully to church, but they're lost and on their way to hell. Their life has not changed at all. There's no newness of life. See, when you truly know Christ and you are born again, and you're saved, and you are a new creature, you don't have to pump these people up. They are motivated from the inside by God and by Jesus to serve the Lord, to humble themselves and to pray and to seek God's face and to turn from their wicked ways and to repent. And they're interested in getting back to their first love if they had that first love in the first place. See, uh, people who are here tonight from all over the world, and by the way, uh, we thank the Lord for uh, a new program. And, and my son, uh, my youngest son, 
getting the hang of it. And now we're on new platforms all over the world that we were not on before, just two days ago. And uh, we'll be on a total of 21 new platforms by tomorrow, by the grace of God. If the Lord should tarry his coming and we live. And so we welcome all of our friends from around the world on every platform. And we thank God for this new thing, uh, for this ministry. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that you may have bought something new or you got a new program or you got something for Christmas new. But it's not going to add to your life in a positive way if you're not new. You can have a new house. You can have a new husband. You can have a new uh, wife. You can have a new uh, car, new whatever. In a new year, if you're not new yourself and you have the old mess still going on in your life, your life is not going to be any different. No new year for you. It's the same old year because it's the same old you. See, some of us think very foolishly that you can be in your hometown, for example, and you know, do the hometown stuff of working, going to the grocery store, if you're smart, going to Dollar General. And we think that if we could just go to the go to the Virgin Islands or to Jamaica to Hawaii, that we would somehow, if we could just go there and live there for about six months, we're going to somehow be better people. But life does not work that way. The same thing with a new year. If, if I can just make it to 2021, I'm going to be a new person. And man, it's 2021 is going to be better than 2020. If I go live in Jamaica or live in Hawaii uh, for a year, uh, my life is going to be so much different. No, it's not. You know why? You can change the year. You can change your uh, geography. But if you don't get changed yourself, guess what? You're going to fly over. You may drink a glass of wine on your way over. When you land, yeah, for example, if you left Atlanta, the same somebody who boarded that plane in Atlanta and landed in beautiful Jamaica land is going to be the same old person. And that's a problem. If I married, you know, my first marriage didn't work out. My second marriage, if I can just marry him, and if I can just marry her, I'll be so happy. No, you won't. That's why That's why both marriages did not work out because it's the same old you. See, you need a new you. If everywhere you walk, something stinks, you better check yourself because you might be the one stinking. Changing your destination, <clears throat> moving into a new year, moving into a new house, uh, buying a new car, marrying a new husband, marrying a new wife, having a new baby. If you're not changed, beloved, uh, if you don't have Jesus Christ at the center of your heart and life, driving everything, no new you and no new year and the rest of the stuff is nothing but trouble the car's going to get old yes even 
Jamaica land and Hawaii and the Virgin Islands and get old. If that's not where you were raised and you're not from there, you're out of place. The new house is going to get old and become a burden. Car payments are going to get old and become a burden. The newness wears off. But now the newness that comes through Christ, that does not wear off. People who are truly born again, dear friends, they endure hardness as good soldiers. They endure until the end. And guess what? They have that thing in them that Jesus talked about before he left. He said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That, that, that joy, that cheerfulness, that peace just bubbles up all the time in a truly born-again person who has been made new by Christ. You don't have to, you don't need anything else to make you happy when you have Christ. Remember now, in Christ, that's the key. We are new creatures only in Christ, through Christ, by the power of Christ. It's about him. See. And come what may, we still have Christ and we have his joy unspeakable, his peace that pass of all understanding. Cheerfulness, when we should be crying and boo-hooing, somehow we still have cheerfulness from him be of good cheer i have overcome the world the true born again child of god is not worried about a thing not fearful about anything he is a new creature old things have passed away behold all things are new and so ladies and gentlemen the start of a new year is indeed a great occasion to make a change in your life. It's a great point of change, but the main change you need to make is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're not a new creature right now. It is so sad, we have so many pastors, you know what they're trying to do? They're trying to raise the dead every Sunday, bless their hearts, they're having heart attacks, they're on medication. You know why? Because they got to raise the dead. These people have never been born again. These people believe buying a new house and a new car is connected with salvation. Foolishly believing this because the false prophets and the false preachers have preached this prosperity garbage mess. That you don't have any tribulations. You don't have any trouble. You can just command them away. You've got some secret authority. Lights. And you know when you go out there with your little authority that some preacher told you you had? You know what the devil says to you? The same thing he said to some folks in the Bible in the book of Acts. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? <laughs> What? Your, your authority, I command. See, listen to me. We've had a bunch of prophets and prophetesses out here waving their hands, crying from, for, for, for angels from Africa, angels from South America, which nobody knows what in the heck she was talking about at all. Nobody, no theologian, no pastor, no preacher. No female preacher, nobody but the devil, I guess, knows what the world she was talking about. I'm baffled to this very night. What in the world she was talking about? And they've been waving hand, uh, their hands. She's one of the main ones talking about uh, we command this plague, this this pandemic to go away. They, they've been doing that mess. 
since last March. And the monster of the plague pandemic has gotten worse, as I told them it would, if we did not in the church and in the family and in the government humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways and repent. And get back to Jesus Christ, our first love. Nobody believed it. I was the only one saying it. Everybody else thought this this will pass away. This uh, this will go away, and we and so everybody followed the president to total destruction. Nobody listened to the man of God. And look at the mess we're in today. Not only do we have a plague. The Civil War has already started. You can, you, you can think that we're the great Americans all you want to. I'm telling you and I'm warning you that God is not playing with America. And there are multiple things that God does to destroy a nation, not just a plague pandemic. And this is a light plague, as I told you. You can escape this plague. God has some plagues that you can't escape. You can be walking down the street and drop dead. In the bubonic plague, they say you can wake up at 9 o'clock, walk down the street, and be dead by 12. And die an ugly death. And by the way, the black death is still here. It's in Madagascar, it's in China, it's in other places. Ready to pop forth any time that God wants it to. God is the one who's in control of that, man. And why did he bring about the black plague? Because of the then known church, the one and only Catholic church, and all of the demonic things they did. Priests raping nuns, killing the babies, burying the babies under the church. Uh, don't bow your head yet. I'm not praying. Popes, pastors who are supposed to be single and celibate having babies and trying to put their sons on the throne of the popery. Then making up stuff like purgatory, lying to the people, Telling them that if you die, you're not going to hell. If you give X amount of dollars, uh, we'll put you in purgatory. Knowing there's no such thing as a purgatory. Purgatory is apocryphal. That means it cannot be proven. Jesus Christ never said anything about purgatory or limbo or vestibule or some place, resting place until you get your sins purged or somebody pay you out of hell or or pray you out of hell. There's no such thing, people. But that's what they, and they made millions. Uh, you wonder why the Catholic Church is so rich? That's how they got rich. You know why the Reformation came along? Because of the bubonic plague. People saw that the church as it was had no power. The bishops and the priests were dying. And that's what's happening today. The church has no power. The church has compromised her authority away. They have no power with presidents. Otherwise, we would not be in this mess. We're in. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that God gives us such time markers as a way for us to stop, look back at our lives and identify things that we can change for the future. You will not make progress until you change or get changed, number one, if you're not born again yet. And then if you're born again, you know you need to change your ways. As evil as Michael Jackson was, even he knew that when he wrote and sung the song, The Man in the Mirror. We need to change. He said, we need to change our ways. And he was right. 
he needed to change his ways. And see, that's the point tonight. It's not about right now the family and the church and uh, the nation, the government. It's about you. Are you going to become new? Because many people focus on making only outward changes. Changes that will improve the way they look. Which is just out of control today. The vanity is out of control today. People are more concerned about how they look on the outside than they, how they look on the inside. Uh, a lady in personnel at a company, she said, we have 80 jobs. And the man asked her, uh, how can someone get this job? She said, if they have the right personality and the right attitude, we can train them to do the job. That's the main thing this uh, human's re human resource lady wanted. Somebody with a pleasant attitude and a pleasant personality. If you got that right there, that's your, that's your calling card right there. You can get the job. We can train you to do the job, but you got to have the right kind of personality. The right kind of attitude. As I've said before, we got people who are fine on the outside, but they're not fine on the inside. They're, they're dead men's bones. And some of you folks are marrying something that looks pretty on the outside and looks handsome on the outside. On the inside is nothing but corruption and devils and demons and ancestral curses and attitude and spirit and personality, multiple personalities change on you on a dime. And scare the daylights out of you. But Jesus can make you new. And whole. From the inside out. I, I uh, heard the motto of. Dr. Tony Evans's ministry. And I like what he says. Uh, uh, the the uh, announcer talks about how that this is preaching and teaching that's all about changing you from the inside out. We have so many people in the church and outside of the church only concerned about the outside. And nothing's going on on the inside. It's nothing. Nothing. Dead as can be. No newness of life. No Jesus Christ, Holy Ghost, motivating them, leading them, guiding them, praying uh, to, God, to pray in the morning and to read the Bible and to obey the Bible. And if, if that's not going on, there's no new you. And so therefore you will not have a new year. It's going to be the same old year with a new number. So, so stop living a make-believe life. I've told you before, and I'm going to say it again. You cannot live a fiction life in a non-fiction world. This is real. And I believe it was Eminem who said, you get one shot. And he's right. This is it. So do you know him tonight? Do you know him? The old saints used to sing, it's not my father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Stop worrying about somebody else and what they're doing. And you become a new person in Christ. If you have never truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
believe in him tonight. Invite him into your heart and life and soul and spirit and help him and let him to help you become new. If you are a believer in Christ, but you have become backslidden, then you need to be renewed, revived. Humble yourself somewhere. Go and humble yourself and pray and seek God's face and confess your sins and repent and turn from your wicked ways. That's the main thing you're, you're going to struggle with. Turning away from the evil you're doing. And get back to your first love. And so ladies and gentlemen, if you're with us tonight, anywhere in the world, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please understand with me and accept a few facts. First, you need to understand that you need to be made new because you are an old sinner. You are a wicked, evil, ungodly sinner, just as I am. And by the way, the Pope is too. All priests are, all bishops are. Joel Osteen is an old sinner as well. For the Bible tells us very clearly, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the first step to becoming new, is to understand you are an old sinner. You're a wicked sinner. You've been sinning since the time you were born. The Bible talks about that from the womb, people are telling lies. So please understand that because of our sins, we deserve to die. And we die. You know why you die? You don't die because of the coronavirus. You don't die because of cancer. You die because of your sin. You are a sinful person. You have chosen to sin against God. You have done evil things, haven't you? Admit it. See, if you can't, if you're too proud to admit that God can't help you, God can't save you. He can't make you new unless you admit you're an old, wicked sinner. See, you got to humble down and admit some things. That's the reason why we die. The body, your body, will one day go to a grave. What? What a waste. But it's because of our own doing. Your soul will go to hell. And spend eternity there. What if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul? What is what is it? What is it worth? It, it, it's, it's just what a waste. And and so many people today they love this world so much. And they're trying to gain the world and they're losing their souls. Thousands upon thousands are losing their souls around the globe each and every day. More than in our lifetime. More than in recent history. Just in America alone with their official number, which is a lie, which they are admitting slowly that it's a lie. It's really over a million people have died in America. And that's more. But just going by their number is more than what died in a few weeks here. Uh, it would be more... Uh, people did from the coronavirus plague than in World War Two, I think they said. What a waste. We die because of our sinful nature. We die because of our sinful choices. We go to hell for the same. Now, either your sins or your sins have to be paid for. Your crimes against God's kingdom, they have to be paid for. Either you're going to pay for them in hell or you're going to believe in Christ who has already paid for them. 
Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. This includes both physical death and spiritual death. Physical death in the grave, spiritual death in hell, the torments of hell. By the way, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than any prophet in the Bible. More than any preacher in the Bible, more than any apostle in the Bible, more than any writer in the Bible, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Don't you think his preachers ought to preach on hell? Sometime, many don't. That's why I preach on it every day. Because I want to see you, more importantly, God wants to see you, Jesus wants to see you saved from hell so that you can come to him in heaven and start afresh and anew and be blessed and live the good life that he wanted you to live in the first place. So hell, dear friends, is a terrible place. Jesus Christ described hell one time in one of his sermons when he said, it is a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. In another sermon, he called it out of darkness. In other parts of the Bible, they talk about the darkness of hell in Peter, the mist of darkness, the blackness of darkness. What kind of darkness is this in hell? Dear friend, if you don't like the darkness and you got to have a light on up here on earth, please do not go to hell. Please don't go to hell. In another sermon, Jesus Christ preached regarding hell that it is a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. In fact, nearly every time Jesus Christ preached on hell, he preached about the fire in hell. Now, you know Jesus Christ is the most loving man in the universe, but yet he was a hell, fire, and brimstone preacher. Why? Because he hates us? No, but because he loves us. He does not want us to go to hell. He wants us to go to heaven. Uh, Jesus Christ preached the, the gospel first and best when he said in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Notice, dear friends, the words whosoever. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. Just follow the simple instructions of Jesus Christ to get saved. It's all by his grace and his mercy. Whosoever means anybody at any time, red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. It makes no difference if you are a Republican or a Democrat. Now, sad to say, in this society, it does make a difference with some people. But in God's eyes, it does not make any difference. God can care less if you are a Republican or Democrat or an independent. Get over yourself and believe in Christ. Humble yourself down and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a new creature. Whosoever believeth in him, the word believeth means to trust in, to have faith in Jesus Christ. Should not perish, that means you will not go to hell, but have everlasting life. This is the greatest deal in the history of the world, and these are the most loving words ever spoken to humankind. You say, well, preacher, don't I uh, uh, need to be in a church? No. Do I need to be a church member, preacher? No, you don't. Do I need to shake the preacher's hand? No. Do I need to raise my right hand? No. Do I need to walk down an aisle in front of a thousand people? No. Do I need to get baptized to get saved, preacher? No. Do I need to do some good works to get saved, preacher? No. Did you hear Jesus say anything about that? He said, whosoever believeth in me, 
whosoever believeth in Jesus should not perish in hell. That means, and, and, but have everlasting life. That means your destination changes as, as soon as you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Preacher, do I have to uh, sing in the choir and do good works for the church? No. Preacher, do I have to give any money to the preachers, up to the, the money hungry preachers in church? No, you don't. None of that will save you. It has nothing to do with your salvation. Some of those things are good to do, but they have nothing to do with your salvation. All you have to do is believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll take it from there. Well, preacher, don't I need to go and clean myself up first before I come to Christ? No, let, no, no don't think like that, because you're going to die and go to hell trying to clean yourself up before you come to Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus Christ first, and he'll clean you up. Romans 10, 9, and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the burning hell. Saved to what? Saved to the glorious heaven to be with God in Jesus. Uh, the saints and the angels and whoever else God has up there. We don't know how wonderful it's going to be, but I will tell you this. If I were you, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Stop loving your darkness more than you love light. Stop loving your old ways and become new in Christ and follow Christ in the newness of life. Come on over. I've been on this road for 41 years, over 41 years by the grace of God, and I'm here to tell you I wouldn't change change anything at all I would trade my walk with Christ and being saved over 41 years for nothing in this world I'm so thankful and so grateful somebody told me the truth as to how to get saved yes I uh, was like you I was in church I was a member of the Baptist Church and the Pentecostal Holiness Church and several of the churches. And we were in church all day on Sunday. My dad was a Baptist preacher. My mother was a Pentecostal Holiness preacher. She still is to this day. But I almost died and went to hell. You know why? Because nobody explained to me what I just explained to you as to what salvation really means. I just saw and heard a bunch of hooping and hollering and uh, sang song preaching and so forth, and I almost died and went to hell. So, dear friend, don't die and go to hell. But I do want you to know that less than the second after you die, if you do not, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and ask him to save your soul. You will lift up your eyes in the torments of hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved. If you're willing to believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ right now, I'm willing to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer as someone led me so many years ago. Let's pray. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have sinned against you. I've done evil in your sight. 
For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe with all of my heart he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. And paid my sin debt. And was buried and rose on the third day by your power. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart and save my soul. And change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of all of my sins. And to turn from my evil life and to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray, amen. Now, dear friend of mine, If you just believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the Holy Bible, you are now saved from hell and you're on your way to heaven. So welcome to the family of God, dear friend. And congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find a pasture. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is my prayer. If the Lord should tarry his coming, we'll be back here tomorrow morning for the uh, standing between the living and the dead. Uh, devotional and it's a great way to start the day by the way particularly in times like these and if you're single and you struggle with getting up and praying and reading the Bible uh, and having a good devotional uh, ours is a little bit more extensive because of what we do and because I'm full-time in the ministry I'm not in a hurry uh, in our family devotions and so forth. So we're not trying to put on a program that's going to just, you know, be a, a short amount of time. We could do that. But we do a lot in the devotionals. And you can come and get what you want and and uh, skedaddle along the way and start your day and doing whatever you do. You don't have to stay as long as we do. Uh, we're normally here for two hours plus unless I get to preaching long. But it's a great way to start the day. One thing you learn about God, the more time, talent, and treasure you give him, he'll make up the difference, if you will, and give you that time back plus some, and he will allow you to accomplish more. And uh, uh it's just like with the money thing. The more you give to him, the more he'll give back to you and so forth and so on. So uh, uh, don't get caught up with the time, how long we have devotions. You just come and get what you need, and uh, then you can go ahead on and do what you need to do. Uh, or you can just have your own devotion right where you are. But we're here for you. Uh, for those who are struggling, 
with personal devotions. Uh, those families who have never had a family devotional time is basically having church at home is what it is. You pray, you read the Bible, sing a song of Zion, and that's pretty much it. Those who uh, used to do it, but stop, we're here for you. And so, by the grace of God, we'll be back here tomorrow morning. Uh, if the Lord tarries is coming and we live. Uh, if you have a prayer list, please place me and our ministry on it. If you don't have a prayer list, get one. And make sure you pray without ceasing for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for others. For we're living in the perilous times. And because America has been so brainwashed with media and movies and things like that, they're not taking America, many people in America are not taking what's going on in America very seriously. But one day, if you're not careful, you're going to look up, and the America you knew will be no more. That's a reality. And so you need to make sure that you save yourselves from this untoward generation. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time. And, of course, if the Lord tarries is coming, we live, we'll be here tomorrow night with the uh, Praying Through the Bible series that we do every Wednesday night. I preach on prayer every Wednesday uh, night, and, uh, and so we'll be back here for that. By the grace of God, if the Lord tarries is coming and we live, pray for this nation and uh, pray that God's will will be done. We'll see you next time. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you so much for this time together around your holy word. I praise you and thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. And Holy Father God, we pray that millions would hear the gospel and be saved. Lord, all around the world. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would revive those who are saved. Lord, I pray that you'll help us, your remnant, help those of us who are part of your 7,000. By your grace, Lord, to be faithful till the end. For your glory, praise, and honor, in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Until next time. To Jesus.